everyone. It's Wednesday afternoon, and that's Hawaii, the state of clean energy day. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan, all the way from the sunny shores. Well, it's sunny looking out the window now for a few minutes of Kaneohe Bay on the flight line to the Marine Corps base. I'm really happy uh, to have our two guests here, Noel Mar Marin uh, from uh, the Hawaii STEM Community uh, Care Organization, and Dr. Craig Berger, uh, medical doctor, MD, Pediatric Division Chief of a local hospital on the Big Island, not to be named. So welcome to Noel and Craig. You guys are at the front lines and you've got a really novel uh, topic today or an item to talk about and that's what you call your Hawaii 600 Blue. I love that, Hawaii Blue uh, reusable face mask. So Noel, I'm gonna start with you and uh, we'll pop-up slides as we go along to illustrate uh, this new product that you guys have developed. But starting off, tell us about Hawaii Blue. Thanks, Mitch. And uh, it's great to be here again. Thank you very much for, uh, for this great service you, you offer to the community. Yeah, if we, if we, we can actually put the first slide up. I uh, just want to uh, essentially call attention to this new product that Hawaii STEM Community Care has put together. It's a, uh, it's a reusable face mask. And um, the, the catalyst for this was essentially our desire to ensure that the reusable masks, cloth masks that are being used by our residents are as safe as, as they can be. And um, we, so we've designed this mask uh, to um, enhance the quality of the masks, uh, cloth masks that are being used out there. Uh, and in the process, we've uncovered additional benefits, uh, namely the, um, you know, the fact that we're able to, to utilize um, uh, what would normally go into the waste stream for the hospital, and that is the uh, the upcycling of polypropylene, uh, which is a fabric that's used to wrap um, uh, surgical instruments. Um, and the, uh, Dr. Berger can expand on this a little bit more because he's he's on the front lines there. And um, importantly, what we've been able to de to determine is a, a design that allows for um, uh, uh, essentially effective filtration. And we were able to determine that or uh, demonstrate that by having, uh, you know, having our mass tested in a, um, uh, you know, uh, go through a qualita qualitative uh, test, which Dr. Berger can uh, can also expand upon. So, uh, in in sum, we have um, to help our community. We've def we've de designed a uh, reusable mask utilizing polypropylene, which is similar fabric that is being used for commercially made um, uh, face masks. And we're distributing these masks to uh, uh, Hawaii Island frontline workers to enhance the quality of the um, PPE that they're utilizing. Dr. Berger, do you want to expound a bit more on the uh, genesis of the project and also the uh, fabric that we're uh, focused on? Sure. Um, initially, back in uh, March, when we started, when we started having the need to wear masks. We started building like regular surgical masks and everybody was looking for a material and uh, we had actually my wife and i had started collecting this stuff because it was such this great material we knew we would find some use for it someday so we had bags of it downstairs in our um, basement uh, so when it came up to make surgical masks we thought well this is waterproof like this stuff beads water off of it it's really unique and since they use it to sterilize equipment it's designed to repel bacteria and viruses naturally so we started using this in regular surgical masks. Around summertime, um, when we started to come to this idea that, look, this is going to be something we're going to be dealing with for you know, maybe a year, uh, I approached Noel and the group to say, like, look, I have this really excellent material, and we can build a mask that's something more towards like a tight-fitting uh, N95 mask comparatively with this really good material. Um, the University of Florida back in April started using this material to build N95 style masks, which they actually distributed to their um, uh, anesthesia staff. So there's some precedent for this. Um, and so Noel's idea, we, you know, we, had it, we all got together and sat down was, look, we want to build the best mask possible. We want to solve all those problems that you have with a mask, whether it you know, irritates your facial hair or, you know, as one of the, one of the women in our group brought up, like, you know, I wanted something that doesn't smudge my makeup. And I was like, well, that, yeah, we, problems we didn't even know we had. Um, so that was sort of the impetus for designing this thing. And we all sat down and kind of pitched it. And 
we were lucky enough to uh, get involved with a, um, a seamstress who des used to design bags here on the Big Island, but she has an extensive history in like all sorts of industrial uh, sewing and um, design. So she's been a, a, like really excellent, and that was from uh, So De Kind was the name of her company. So there you go. And we need to get a plug in for her. So it's So as in sewing, Da, and of course Hawaii for Da the Kind, A I N E. So Da Kind. That's her plug. <laughs> yeah. Initially, she was making our like surgical style masks um, for free and donating them out. And so she was a natural person to bring in to kind of help us with this next project. And she's really been like essential to getting everything exactly right. Um, so, you know, the nice thing is our goal is to really, you know, you go out to a restaurant or you go or you go out to a, a, a to Target and you see the person working at the counter and they're or the checkout and they've got like a who knows what kind of cloth mask on and they're getting exposed every day to people so really to try to give them a mask that would give them as much protection as possible um, was what our goal was and then also to back up first line responders hospital staff or uh, doctor's office staff who may be short on the high quality commercial grade masks as well well, the other feature of this is, is it's, uh, you can um, cycle it as well. It's, uh, um, what would you call that? Um, reusable. So yes, we might yes. want to talk about that. And if you, I don't know if you've put up any of the slides yet, but let's get the uh, number slide two so you can actually see what the fabric kind of looks like. Yeah, this, um, so just, just a, a note on re, uh, the, um, the fact that it's reusable. So our intention is to come up with a better reusable uh, face mask. And um, what I mean by that is, uh, you, you know, the, the general public has access to these various cloth masks that are intended to be reused, right? These are not the uh, single use items that you would find in, at Home Depot, for example. Uh, so the, the, the idea was that we would offer residents with a, uh, a better alternative to re a regular cloth mask, something that would provide them with more protection. And because it's reusable, it's also more economical. It's intended to be um, uh, used for a, a relatively longer period of time. Uh, so, so that's the that's the uh, the intent. It, it's not a one-time uh, use mask or, or a, a mask that has lim limited life, like an N95 uh, or a surgical mask, for that matter. And uh, it's meant to uh, be a replacement for the commonly used cloth masks that you see everywhere. I'd like to, um, yeah, uh, I'd like to maybe have us talk about the fabric itself. And uh, there is a slide, slide three, um, that uh, describes the filtration um, capability of polypropylene. And uh, Dr. Berger, you're probably in a better position to um, explain this. So this slide came from a study that was looking at the effectiveness of the mask or masks as you exhale or cough. And so they compared several different materials. Um, and one of the things that was exciting was our material was included. And now this is a surgical style mask. So loose fitting, slipped over your ears kind of thing, um, but made from our material. And it showed that this reused material was very close or almost equivalent to a commercial grade material um, in either a surgical mask or an N95. So that gives you an idea that a cloth mask while that provides some protection still allows some of the exhaled or coughed out particles to pass through it. And that this material actually reduces that by a substantial amount. So it makes it safer for people you're interacting with. But we went ahead and tried to design a mask that would actually perhaps um, we were able to show somewhat be safer for the wearer as well. All right, yeah, you see it's almost you know, exactly uh, almost as good as that N95-14, which is on the far, you know, the, the first the first item there on the left. That's pretty impressive. One of the one of the exciting things that um, we were also de uh, able to determine is so so this one would would uh, speaks to this um, uh, slide speaks to uh, the, um, the the effectiveness of of fabric in terms of preventing things from going through right when you're exhaling. Now, um, th there were some tests that we've conducted, so um, uh, which would essentially allow us to determine how effective the, the, uh, the mask would be in terms of preventing stuff from going in. 
And uh, there are a number of tests that are being done that could be done for that. And one, uh, one of them is the, with the use of a, a bitterant. And um, uh, Sorry, Dr. Berger again can explain that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think a lot of people don't realize when we talk about N95s, like when you buy them at you know, Home Depot and you wear them for painting and stuff like that, really for an N95 mask to work, it needs to be tight fitting to your, to your face. It needs to not let any air in from the side. So in the hospital, what we do to test for that fit is we have a, we put this really looking silly plastic hood over our head and we inject a uh, this, like aerosolized bitter tasting kind of uh, chemical into the hood. And if the mask is doing its job, when you breathe in or move around, you don't taste or feel that. So we had access to that test and what we were able to show that with our mask pulled tight, tied down correctly, you, we could keep those bitter particles out of or I could keep those bitter particles out of my mouth. The great part about that is the bitter particle is relatively close to the same size or a little bit, maybe even smaller to um, an aerosolized particle, so a droplet that might be carrying the virus. So in this theory, in what we were able to show is that um, uh, qualitatively is that if this mask is tight fitting, this bitter particle won't pass through the mask. And so as long as it can't sneak around the sides, it's probably protecting you from inhaled droplets. So even perhaps if somebody were to talk or cough near you, those particles, if the mask was tight fitting, wouldn't get inside your mouth or nose. So that's wow. really exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting. So uh, why don't we uh, flip over to the next slide and talk a little bit about washing and mask wearing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, let, let, let's let's flip to that slide. So um, th this essentially is our message uh, and uh, it kind of summarizes our, our message and intention as it relates to this project. Uh, first of all, um, we continue to encourage the, the, the proper um, healthy habits, right? Uh, mask wearing, uh, proper hand washings and social distancing. This is going to these these activities are going to be are going to persist for a long while. Even given the fact that the the, vi the uh, vaccine for the virus is here, uh, it's going to be a while before we get back before the pandemic is over. So these things are going to continue to be important. The other the other uh, point here about caring for uh, our community is that we're distributing these things these masks uh, free of charge to our frontline workers. Now we are dependent on um, uh, funding. And we have limited supplies, so we will continue to pr uh, produce these as, as long as we have the means to, and uh, and therefore, uh, we, you know, we'll distribute while the supplies last. So how, um, how do you get the? Hang on, let me interrupt you there. How, how do you get the word out to the frontline workers that these are available? Yeah, so we we have been reaching out. We we have established a relationship with a number of um, uh, groups based on the fact that we have been distributing PPE for several months now. And um, right. you know we'll we'll be reaching out to them. We've been uh, advertising on social media, and we've been getting some uh, traction based on just visibility to um, you know the work that we've done historically, and also the fact that we're doing the outreach to the general public and also uh, certain business groups. Um, so what's, what's been the uptake? Like you know, this is the second show or second or third show we've had with you guys. And uh, you've been so you've been at it for many months. So have you kept any data on the like, the number of uh, masks that you've already distributed, you know, uh, the PPE you've distributed. So, so for the masks, for the mask, uh, the um, we just started distributing just recently. Uh, it was only the other week that we were we got to the point where we made a decision to move forward. So uh, we're making we're uh, ramping up production, and we just started uh, advertising this week. Uh, we did get our first uh, uh, order uh, from a local uh, healthcare facility. And uh, we will be filling that shortly. So it's it's uh, it's uh, nascent. We haven't uh, you know we just started distribution. As far as the general PPE uh, distribution is concerned, we've we've distributed. Uh, you know when you take into account face shields and and um, uh, 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 the mask comfort bands, uh, what we call ear savers, and all the other PPE uh, devices that we've just uh, created, uh, we we have distributed over. 3,500 or so of these uh, items to the general public. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully that addresses your question, Mitch. Uh, we will continue to dis distribute as soon as long as we have the, the means to, and as long as the need is there. 
Um, one, of, one of the things I also want to emphasize is that we, we seek to empower others. So the knowledge we have about the fabric, the effectiveness of the fabric in terms of filtration, we, we, want to, we are socializing that with uh, groups that make masks so that they can leverage the same technology, the same um, you know, solution to enhance the quality of the masks that are being produced. So this, this is not about, this, there's no profit involved here. Uh, we're about uh, empowering the community. We're about providing the community with the right uh, uh, solutions. And part of that is um, uh, uh, empowering the uh, mask makers with the same so, uh, technology and design. So we, we're, we hope to be able to influence what others are producing so that we'll have a bigger impact. So where do, where do you source the material? I mean, I know the doc, uh, you got you had a supply built up, uh, you know, waste not want not, but you know when you run out of that, eventually, people are going to have to order it. So is it easy to get this uh, this material, and is it expensive, or what are we talking about here? So, I, the last time I think the last time I think we looked at the um, direct from direct order, it's not that hard to get. It comes in large rolls. I believe it was somewhere in the forty to sixty dollar range for the rolls we were using. Um, however, to be honest, you know this material is it's so used in hospitals that it's really hard to, um, you know, we are backlogged in storing this stuff. It's really easy to get, and our production. I mean, we've made five hundred masks, and I think we basically just broke one of our collection bags. So, you know, we're we're we would be happy to get more, and it's so easy to come by. That's awesome. So better than going into the landfill, right? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, saving Absolutely. people's lives potentially as well. So let's uh, look at uh, let's call up the next slide. You've got. Uh, yeah. So so the, the the question is how do you get this? And um, if you go on to the next slide, um, you can visit our website, highstemcare.org um, forward slash shop. And uh, you will be able to you'll be you'll be taken to this uh, this shop uh, this this store online store essentially, and uh, on here um, just below the fold and you go you can go to the next slide you'll see access to the uh, product page, and uh, this is where you're able to um, uh, place an order, and uh, once the order is placed we will uh, we will process them on a first come first uh, first serve uh, basis. So, so the, you the, have the key, one, don't you? You have one. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, yes. Yes, I have a sample right here. <laughs> wow, it's actually not a bad looking uh, mask. Thank you. Yeah, so, so the key is uh, visiting the website, Hawaii STEM, or I'm sorry, highstemcare.org. And there you'll find the link to PPE and the shop. And uh, again, uh, this, is, this is available to uh, Hawaii Island, uh, Hawaii Island uh, frontline workers. Uh, we, if there are requests from uh, other groups, we will, um, you know, we will address them on a first come first, uh, first serve basis with priority, of course, to our frontline workers. And uh, the, um, the next slide is, well, it's, it's essentially a summary of um, how we are, um, how this is coming together. I want to highlight and uh, the efforts of the Hawaii STEM community care team that's uh, you know worked on this diligently for a, a few months now. Uh, the uh, so, Hilo Medical. So, so who are they? What does STEM mean? And remind everybody who the STEM community care team is and what they're made up of. Yeah, so STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. So this is uh, a, a number. It's a HUI essentially that was formed early this year in response to the pandemic and the need for um, solutions to address the PPE shortage. So we have a number of organizations and individuals associated with uh, STEM. So STEM education, uh, STEM industry, you've got um, Canada, France, Hawaii Telescope, you've got Pisces, you've got uh, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii uh, Science and Tech Museum, uh, Next Tech, Hawaii. So a number of organizations uh, and their volunteers who have essentially formed this uh, coalition and we have a number of projects that have gone through, that we've gone through, and also a number of projects in flight. And uh, it's all through the um, generosity of our volunteers. And you have a lot of students involved in this too, right? right. Yes, yes. We have- Talk a little uh, what, bit about that, and how the students are becoming involved. Yeah, so one of the things that, uh, one of the motivations for uh, this particular group is to also encourage interest in STEM. And, um, 
And one way to do that is to actually involve students directly in the process. Uh, and there have been projects where they actually have done that. Uh, and what I mean by that is actually be involved in um, helping with the design of a certain product. The other thing that we try to do is to share the experience that we've gone through to come up with these things with students. And, uh, and that, that process of understanding how a group of individuals would arrive at assessing a problem, uh, arriving at potential solutions after identifying root cause, testing the solutions, and then coming up with the solutions um, is that that whole process is something that we also aim to impart to um, uh, students that are affiliated with our STEM groups. So uh, Dr. Berger, can you tell us a little bit about the Hilo Medical Center Foundation? So the HMC Foundation is a group that's put together to help um, what's the word, I guess, you help provide more resources to the hospital. You know, they have done things, they do a, I know they do a yearly like wine and cheese event um, to help. They provide uh, on a very visible level, they come around daily with books and items that you, they give away free to patients who are in the hospital to help them entertain themselves and stuff like that. Uh, they work with school groups, they do educational outreach. Um, they kind of seem to handle a lot of the, the donation money for the hospital. And for the, us, they are, uh, they provide sort of like a, they provide sort of like a filter for the material for us, which is nice too. Um, they're actually receiving the material from the hospital and gifting, it's getting gifted from the hospital to them and then they gift it to us. And that kind of gets rid of any awkward, you know, ownership issues that come with the material. That's been really nice as well. They worked with that and they've been working with us without any sort of compensation or requesting anything with us. They just want us to succeed and help us take care of uh, our community. So does uh, Kona have a similar one? I see it's Hilo. What about Kona? Do they have a similar organization? I, I do not know. I mean, uh, the Kona Hospital is like, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but the Kona Hospital is like a different entity than us altogether. Okay, very good. So, um, Talk, us, talk to us a little bit about how you're raising money for this, like the mechanics of raising money. How do we do that? Because this, it's not free. I mean, nothing is free. Um, you're giving them out free, but you require, you know, you require the generosity of donors out there. So how, how do they, how does that work? Yeah, so the, the initial uh, uh, funding for the first batch of uh, masks uh, were courtesy of Next Tech, uh, as well as the Hawaiian, Hawaii Science and Technology Museum. And uh, these organizations receive funding from other organizations like uh, the um, uh, Hawaii Community, Community Foundation as an example. So, so, so the, the initial uh, batch of masks uh, were funded through those two organizations. And uh, we were fortunate enough to have a local donor step up um, with uh, the opportunity to match up to $15,000 of their um, wow. donation. So um, we at the moment are also starting to ramp up a uh, fundraising uh, um, opportunity, which is to reach out to potential donors um, to, uh, to donate to the, to the project. And there will be a match up to, again, $15,000 from our, um, our generous uh, local donor. And uh, to, to, uh, for folks who are interested in donating, if you go to the next slide, there is on our website, again, it's highstemcare.org. On the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there's a donate button, and there's the opportunity for us to, uh, for, for, for anyone to uh, make a tax-deductible deduct contribution uh, to the organization. What about, have you, got, have you received any uh, county money or state money to support your, your uh, areas? Not, um, not, not for this particular project, although we are reaching out and are hopeful that we might uh, be able to uh, obtain some um, funds from the government. Okay. okay. So um, if you go to your website, I mean, what about, uh, you talked about other people being able to make these, or what about getting a set of plans and instructions on how to make these masks? I remember Richard Haw came out with a, right at the start of the pandemic with a, a very good uh, set of plans and, and uh, patterns for actually making them uh, right down to how you stitch it. Do you have, is, have you developed uh, like a, a, a user package there of, of how you can make one of these? Do 
so, to speak to that, Craig? Yeah. So initially, um, we I do I do have a website with like a surgical style mask pattern for the blue for the blue wrap. It uses um, a different a thinner material, similar but it's a little more pliable. Um, and we have so we have a website for that. You know, right now we're using this as a way. Um, our seamstress, the, you know, from Soda Kind, this is a way to help her put her company back in business. And well, I shouldn't say her company, but to reach out to all of her seamstresses that she had to put out of work during the pandemic to sort of give them some sort of revenue. Um, I think on top of that, there is some work with North North Hawaii, and that they are starting to collect the material. And then I think from there, we can put together a pattern. So I think right now we're in this, still in this kind of initial stage that we don't have this design yet in a ready to go package for uh, easy duplication, but I definitely think it's something in the works um, down the road. Right. Um, I, I'd like to expand on that. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, any interested parties um, can, get, can contact us also through the website. There's a contact us uh, a link at the top and uh, we um, will collaborate with them to help them understand uh, access to the fabric. And then also uh, we, we ultimately are going to be sharing, uh, you know, uh, designs, plans. But um, yeah, the, um, the, the key is to get in touch with us and we will, um, we will, get in, we will respond and provide them with whatever information is, is necessary. Okay. So again, on the, on the website, um, there's a contact us link in the header they just have to visit highstemcare.org. Okay. I'm not sure if we talked about it, but we'll talk a little bit more about regenerating them. So you, 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 when we started, before we started the show, there were, you don't put it in the washing machine and wash it, you know, with your laundry, correct? Correct. The, the material, this, this material and what they use in regular N95 masks, it's not just a, a mesh material. It also has like this, it carries this electric, you know, electric uh, charge that helps prevent the viruses from uh, you know, passing through the mask. And so that is, needs to be protected. So you can't throw it in a wash machine with soap and water because the detergent will interfere with that process. So we've come up with a couple of different ways. Um, one, of the, one way is that we do a dry heat version where you can put it in the oven, I believe it's 160 degrees for about 30 minutes and that will clean or remove any of the contaminants from the mask. Uh, you can also boil it in water for a couple of minutes, I believe it's two or three minutes, um, and that will also sanitize the mask, and then you have to like lay it out to dry. Uh, but there's also been stuff published to do, you can clean like an N95 using dry heat, like in a rice cooker or Instapot. Um, I believe that's a... I, you know, I, I don't know, I don't have any data for a hair dryer, and that's kind of the, you know, the, anything with, I imagine dry heat would work. I don't know how long or how much, and because with a hand, hair dryer, I would imagine you have a lot of variation in, you know, as you're waving it around, it might be hard to be very consistent, but I would go to the, I mean, the oven wear is definitely an easy way of doing it. Okay, so uh, we're coming up to the end of our time, believe it or not. Um, let's look at the last slide. And uh, Noel, let's let's hit the uh, the contact part to make sure that everybody knows how to get involved in this program. Um, yeah, so I just let me just uh, emphasize highstemcare.org is the website, and from there you can access the various information about the PPEs, including this particular product. Uh, if you want to go directly to this product page, it's highstemcare.org forward slash hi six hundred, and um, um, there is a contact us link on the website, but if there's a desire to get in touch with someone directly, uh, my email address is uh, noelgmorin at gmail.com. So that's the end of our show, believe it or not. It's uh, gone away. <laughs> so actually, this is the last show uh, for me uh, for 2020. I'll be back, I hope, in 2021. Maybe if I have one year mask, so I can make sure that I uh, come back. I, well, you know? we'll get we'll say we'll get one your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll help. I'll pay for that. So anyway, I, I've uh, been very happy to have Noel and uh, Craig here. Uh, thank you for your service, Craig. Uh, you're on the front lines, man. Like we said before the show started, I admire what you're doing for all of us out there and and protecting you. us. For, you're going in harm's way. So thanks so much. Um, and that's uh, Think Tech Hawaii. 
Hawaii, the state of clean energy, winding up. Aloha. Aloha.